Today we are going to be asking one of life's biggest questions. Can I use AI to help my gardening? As you probably know, AI is an extremely powerful tool that can be used for a number of different things. The options are literally endless of what you can do with AI. So I like to find those little tiny things that nobody else has thought of to use AI for and to see if they'll work. So in the garden community, there's this thing called companion planting. And what that means is that certain plants like to be planted together and certain plants like to be planted apart from each other. So take tomatoes and basil. The basil helps to flavor the tomatoes a lot better and the tomatoes in turn provide shade for the basil. So what I've done in the past since I am a complete nerd is I've made this giant spreadsheet and I can reference that spreadsheet to see which plants like to be planted next to each other and which plants is best to avoid them being together. So I've done all the research on this and put way too much time and effort into this spreadsheet. So if AI can do what I did in a fraction of the time, I'm gonna be really impressed. So I got my list of seeds that I'm gonna plug into AI. Shout out to Baker's Creek and Rare Seeds who give me all these awesome seeds. First, what you need to do is go to ChatGPT. Just type that into your browser. You'll probably have to make an account or something if you haven't done so already. And it's really easy to use. All you do is go there and type in whatever question you may have about the world or whatever. You can do stupid things like making it count from one to 10,000 or something just to, you know, torture it. Or you can use it for useful things. So you can do really stupid stuff with it, but you can also do some really amazing cool stuff with it too. And that's what we're gonna try to do today is the really amazing cool stuff. And here's that spreadsheet I was talking about. It is wild. I spent way too much time making this. Basically what it is is, so I have each plant that I wanna plant all the way down and I have a bunch of plants and it's just a little graph chart. So, so if I wanna see if broccoli and dill can be planted together, for example, I can go to broccoli, follow it all the way down to dill and look at that, they can be planted together. What the letters stand for are P stands for pest, N stands for nutrient. Uh, if they're not a good fit for pest reasons or for nutrient reasons, I'll put that down specifically. And yeah, it's just a massive spreadsheet that I spent way too much time making. But so far it's really come in handy a lot when laying out our garden. So my first spreadsheet helps me to see what plants like to be together. Then this spreadsheet helps me to lay out the beds for the year. I constantly have to cross reference both spreadsheets as I'm laying out them out, which is not ideal, but my brain works like this for some reason and you got to find what works for you. But I'm really hoping AI can help me out by simplifying this process. So what I'm going to do first is start out by telling AI a little bit about my garden. So I have three, raised planter beds and I want most optimal layout in regards to companion planting based on the seeds that I have. I want to plant parsley, celeriac, dill, radish, eggplant, cantaloupe, and pumpkin. So AI says companion planting is the practice of planting certain crops next to each other to maximize their growth and health benefits, blah, blah, blah. Here's an optimal lay layout for your three raised planter beds based on companion planting principles. So off to a good start. So it's laying it out bed one, bed two, and I'm assuming bed three at some point. So it's saying parsley, dill, basil, blah, 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 radishes and carrots. This is awesome. Rotate your crops each year. Plant amaranth, so bed three. Plant amaranth and gourds together as they, oh, I didn't know that. I didn't, I didn't know that amaranth and gourds went together as they have similar growing requirements and are both excellent for soil health and any remaining plants that do not have a specific companion in this bed. Aw, sad. Some plants don't have companions. 
Rotate your crops to prevent soil-borne diseases and pest infestations. Be sure to give each plant enough space to grow and thrive. That's something that we have not done well in the past. So that wasn't too bad. I think we can improve it a little bit. What I am gonna do is I'm gonna now type the same thing that I was doing before, raised garden beds. Bed three is in partial shade, I should say. Bed one gets the most sunlight. What is the most optimal layout? I need to put some dimensions in here. They are uh, four feet by eight feet. Based on my seed selection and the sunlight conditions of your raised garden beds, here's an optimal layout for your three raised garden beds. Bed one, full sun, so it's got that right. This is amazing. So I'm gonna say that same thing again, and I am going to try to trip AI a little bit and see if it catches my mistake that I purposely made. It will be a summer garden in San Antonio, Texas. Based on the seed selection and the growing conditions in San Antonio, Texas, here's an optimal layout, blah, blah, blah. So the one that I put in here to trick AI a little bit was celeriac. I'm pretty sure that it is more of a winter plant, so I'm gonna see if it can actually detect that I shouldn't plant celeriac in here at all. So this is awesome. It says, so it doesn't say that celeriac will die in the summer, but it does say plant sage and celeriac on the one end of the bed as they can tolerate partial shade and cooler temperatures. And it puts it in the bed three, which has partial shade in it, which is exactly what we would want if we were to plant celeriac this year. I don't think we're gonna do that. And also gives information about the climate here in San Antonio, Texas too. Uh, make sure to water your plants regularly, duh, especially in the hot and dry summer months in San Antonio. You can also consider adding some mulch to help retain the moisture in the soil. That's something that I really think we should do this year. Okay, that was not too bad. So next, let's see, what am I gonna do next? I'm gonna say, so same exact thing. I just wanna keep making it complicated for them and give them as much information as I can possibly give them. So same thing, just copy and pasted. So nightshades are one of those plants that doesn't like to be planted in the same spot each year, uh, just because of soil borne diseases and stuff. So I'm gonna say to AI, we previously had nightshades planted in X bed, and I'm trying to remember which bed last year we had nightshades planted, like tomatoes and peppers and eggplants, stuff like that. There we go, right away. Since nightshades were previously planted in bed two, it's important to practice crop rotation and avoid planting plants in the same family in that bed again this year. Oh, but it screwed that up. It put eggplants and tomatillos in the bed that has nightshades in it. Let's see, where are they putting tomatoes and peppers? It looks like it didn't put tomatoes and peppers in here. That's annoying. Okay, hmm. I'm gonna try that again, because it kind of screwed that up. But I'm also gonna add and seed spacing. Here we go, okay. So we've got some more information about spacing. Since I put the spacing in, it really latches on to, like if you say one thing, and then copy that thing and then try it again, just tweaked. It really latches on to the little difference that you made. And instead of answering the full question, really latches onto that first little part or that part that you changed. But it still did a really good job and you can compile the information that you've gotten from AI and make your own judgment. Okay, so this time it put eggplants and tomatillos still in bed two which are nightshades, which isn't the best. Um, and they put basil away from the tomatoes, which is really surprising to me. Uh, the tomatoes and peppers ended up being in bed three, which is good. I think that keeping those away from the bed two that has the previously had nightshades in it is a good thing. But it really surprises me that they didn't put basil in with the tomatoes because those are a quintessential companion planting pair. Oh, and it says, good luck with your summer garden in San Antonio. Oh, it's listening. <laughs> so I think we have just about enough information to start planting. We have our seed spacing. 
we have our general layout and the general layout kind of changes. So there will be some post editing of this whole list just to make sure that it is actually optimal. But yeah, it looks like AI did an amazing job and I will have to also reference my spreadsheet a little bit just to double check some of these companion planting and make sure that they are indeed a good fit. Not that I don't trust AI, but I think it'd be best to not ruin a whole summer's crops and actually just verify, at least this time, just to make sure that it's all on the up and up. But I know AI would never lie to me. Unfortunately for me, AI can't use a shovel yet, so in the meantime, I'm gonna have to shovel all this compost by hand. Oh well. We have to do a little bit of prep to our beds before we are ready to sow our summer garden. Our soil desperately needs to be amended, so we're gonna be adding some stuff to our soil. In hindsight, I totally could have asked AI what I should add to my so soil based on its location and pH levels. That would be pretty cool. So here's our garden right here and a little dog, next door neighbor dog. And we still have some plants in them. We have a bunch of weeds growing in them. So we're gonna be clearing those as well. Some plants we will keep like the sage that's in bed three right here. And that's just because it lasts a long time and can last over the winter. So here's us just clearing out some stuff. We have a whole bunch of carrots that we're going through and picking out. Quick sidebar about tilling your garden before you plant. Tilling helps to kill bad bugs that are overwintering in your soil but it can also kill good, good bugs too. However, we don't have many good bugs in our garden and we definitely have a bunch of bad ones. So until we develop a healthy ecosystem in our garden, that's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna be adding some blood meal, bone meal, our compost, some potash and some peat moss and mixing it all together. As far as the AI garden layout goes, after doing a deep dive into our results, we honestly weren't too happy with it. It gave us a really good baseline to follow but it definitely did make some errors, some minor and some pretty glaring, like putting the nightshades in the wrong bed. So we went ahead and altered AI suggestions a little bit. It's an incredibly powerful tool and very useful for gardeners still, but it's still helpful to have a baseline knowledge of companion planting principles before accepting what AI says as fact. The answers AI gave us also weren't as complete as I was hoping they would be. It seemed selective in what information it was going to give us based on how I changed the prompt. And I would love at some point to be able to type a full essay about the state of my garden beds and have AI to be able to fully comprehend and respond to each point that I make in my question instead of having to ask multiple times and consolidating its responses. I'm really excited about these gourd seeds that we found that apparently look like this old farmer guy. I'm really excited to see these grow. Down below, I'll list all of the plants that were in each bed, just so you guys can have that as a reference. I'll also reference the spreadsheet that I have down there, just in case you guys want to use that as well. Ooh, and marigolds are super essential, at least for us, because we have squash bugs that eat a lot of our squashes and melons and they just go crazy over those things. Last thing you need is a little bit of watering just to water all those seeds in and hopefully by summer we'll have some nice little plants. Just for fun I went back and asked AI to list every typical garden plant and each of its associated companion plants and that totally stumped it. So should you go and blindly trust AI to design your garden for you? Yes. Of course you definitely shouldn't but it is a really great tool if you want to start to learn about companion planting or if you already have a background knowledge of companion planting and you just want to simplify the process a little bit. I'm honestly not sure if I'm going to use AI again to design my garden. We'll have to see, but I definitely love this. It was a fun learning experience and I learned a ton about it, about AI and what it can do. It's a really powerful program. So as promised, I'll leave some links down in the description about my uh, spreadsheets that I have and a bunch of other information. So check them out and give us a like and a subscribe if you don't mind. We would love that and appreciate it. Thanks for watching. See you next time. <laughs>